Hey, have you ever been riding your bike to work and you hear a sound coming up behind you that sounds something like this? No, that sound was probably not a jet engine. It was probably something like this. This is a fat bike and fat bikes have those big, low pressure tires that make a distinctive sound. I'm Tom and this is Shifter, a channel all about urban cycling and bike commuting. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing down below. So last winter, you may have seen my video about my perfect winter bike. It was a bike I dreamed about for years and it finally came true and I've been riding it for a couple of years now and I really enjoy it. But one of the things that people always ask me about is fat bikes. Why don't I ride a fat bike in winter? And the truth was I tried a lot of fat bikes, but I just didn't like the big low pressure tires for a commute. They just seemed too inefficient, too big, too heavy, too slow. Did not love them that much. But more and more these days, you're seeing these kinds of things, which is an indication of an e-bike. And this year I'm seeing out in the streets more and more e-fat bikes. And it made me wonder if that pedal assist motor might make all the difference. And so today I rented this bike from a local bike shop because I wanted to see, will an e-bike change my mind about a fat bike as a commuter vehicle? So today I'm just out to test it and see if that will change my mind. So one thing you notice immediately on riding an e-fat bike is that that pedal assist motor just makes it so much easier to deal with the inefficiency of those big fat tires. When I ride a regular fat bike, I always feel like it's so much extra work just to get the to get your body moving, but that pedal assist motor just gives it a zip. I mean, I'm going up a hill right now and it barely feels like it. It's always the joys of a heat bike. It's always so fun when you get on one for the first few moments. So this is a good bike. It's a Cube New Trail with a Bosch pedal assist system. I don't want to talk too much about the specifics of this model. It's a good bike, integrated really well with that pedal assist. Bosch makes a good product. That's not really the point though. The point here is more about the idea of an e-fat bike as a commuter or urban bike. I've been riding it for a while now, and one of the things I just love about a fat bike in a city is the stability of it. This one also has studded tires. So when I'm riding on a road, whether it's a bit patchy with snow and ice or straight up snow, I just feel so stable on this bike. It's just, it's big. It uh, gives me so much confidence that I'm not gonna slip and fall. It feels really good. It feels great to be back in the, riding with traffic a bit more. It kind of already gives me a bit of a false sense of security because I feel so confident riding it. I've forgotten about that stability, the confidence that I get from riding a fat bike. One of the great things about this bike is the way it just crushes hills. This is a pretty big slippery hill. Okay, I put the motor on turbo, the highest level of pedal assist. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Man, look at this. Wow. Definitely the joys of an e-bike. That was nothing. And of course that pedal assist is so nice to get you up to speed quickly, which is kind of nice in the winter when everything's just a little bit harder. So I'm enjoying this ride so far. One of the things you have to get used to in riding in the winter is judging the kinds of snow. If it's loose or hard packed or fluffy, it all has different sort of properties that keep you stable or, or not stable. Sometimes they're slippery. I feel like I don't have to care about that on a fat bike. I just roll over all of them. The other thing about this bike is that it's just fun to ride. It, you can just crush those snow bags. It feels really good. It's really fun to ride. But the more I rode it, the more I started to see some of the limitations as a commuter bike. That extra speed was nice to get me to my destination a little bit quicker but I actually found it a little harder to stay warm in the winter while riding this bike. I was able to get up to such high speeds with such little effort that uh, my body wasn't generating as much heat as I was used to. I'm sure this is something that you can overcome with just more practice and riding it more often, but going faster meant the air was moving faster. I felt like I was getting more wind and I wasn't generating as much heat. So it was a bit tougher to stay warm, which surprised me. I mean, that's not an insurmountable problem, but it's out there. The other limitations are, it's just not that practical as an urban vehicle. I mean, I could add a bike rack at the back and some panniers and that sort of thing. But I mean, this bike is made for pleasure. It's made for hitting trails and getting out in the mountains and that sort of thing too. Have to add lights to it to make it an urban vehicle, a rack, a bag. These big fat tires don't always fit in uh, urban bike racks, which is kind of annoying. It's just little things like that that make it maybe not the ideal urban vehicle. The other thing that worries me about using this as a commuter vehicle is it's the cost. This bike is worth about $6,000 Canadian. 
which is pricey. E-bikes are always a little bit more, and that's a pretty steep price for an urban commuter vehicle, especially in the winter, because in a city like mine, where we have lots of salt on the roads, lots of freeze melt cycles, it just destroys components. And I was always worried about having such a beautiful bike that I fell in love with, only to have it destroyed by the elements. In a city like this, that is almost a deal breaker for me. I also worry about leaving the, a bike this expensive locked around the city because I might get stolen. It drives me crazy that the fear of theft discourages people from riding nice bikes, but that's just the world we happen to live in right now. So the cost really is a factor. It may not matter to you, but I do think that price tag is something you need to think about. So overall, has this changed my mind? Is an e-fat bike the perfect winter vehicle? Well, I'd say this bike is a blast to ride. It's a lot of fun. For me, I think I'm gonna stick with my priority Continuum Onyx, a skinny tire bike with a lot of components that aren't gonna rust. But I think there's probably a lot of cases out there where a fat bike like this would be great for a commute. If you've got a long ride, and an e-bike would be great. If you don't have a lot of safe bike infrastructure, if you feel like you have to be on a lot of roads, if you don't have a lot of paved bike routes, uh, a fat bike will get through the snow much easier than some other bikes. So there are definitely some cases where I can see a fat bike working for you. But for me, I'm gonna stick with my original idea that my perfect winter bike remains my perfect winter bike. But whenever I get a chance to ride a fat bike or an e-fat bike, I'm definitely gonna take advantage of that opportunity because they are so fun to ride. Uh, happy riding out there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.